identification of crystalline phase and determination of lattice constant aim conduct an investigation on the powder x-ray diffraction pattern that is pxrd pattern of a given unknown crystalline material and determine its crystalline phase and lattice constant the apparatus required are the readily available x-ray diffraction patterns of few of few polycrystalline substances miller indices comparison chart and a laboratory stationery formula the lattice constant of a given unknown cubic crystalline sample is a is equal to lambda by sin theta into root over h square plus k square plus l square where lambda refers to the wavelength of the x-ray source used in the experiment here we are assuming it to be a copper k alpha source whose wavelength value is lambda equal to 1.5406 angstroms theta refers to the glancing angle that is the angle made by the incident x-ray beam with the crystallographic planes with the crystallographic parallel planes of atoms that is theta h k l here refer to the miller indices of the parallel planes of atoms so here the lattice constant is measured in angstroms now this is a sample x-ray diffraction pattern of an unknown crystalline unknown crystalline sample now here it is in plot between intensity of the diffracted x-ray beam from various parallel planes of atoms and the twice the glancing angle on x-axis twice the glancing angle on x-axis and on y-axis is the intensity of diffra diffracted x-ray beams from various parallel planes of atoms which is measured in counts per second okay on this pattern we can look like we can we can observe this dif bragg diffraction peaks are observed you can see this is one of the bragg diffraction peak arising from a, a specific parallel planes of atoms this is another bragg diffraction peak arising from another parallel planes of atoms this is this is the diffraction peak arising from another parallel planes of atoms and so on so forth and you can see that among all these peaks this peaks is this peak is is having highest intensity so th this means that this is the most preferred x-ray diffraction um, x-ray diffraction among this peak which is having the highest intensity refers the refers to the most preferred orientation of atoms inside the crystal right. coming to this observation table we can obs we can uh, look over here this is the peak 1 peak 2 peak 3 peak 4 5 and 6 and so on so these peaks are numbered in such a fashion first diffraction peak second diffraction peak third fourth fifth and sixth these are the various diffraction peaks and these two theta values correspond to correspond to the bragg angle of diffraction here you can see that the peak having highest intensity that is peak number 1 is uh, is the, the angle of diffraction uh, value 2 theta corresponds to 44.53 degrees so this could be around 44.53 degrees this could be around that value and the second diffraction peak is a, is a raising at a value of 2 theta equal to 51.89 degrees and so on for the th for the third peak it is around 76.45 degrees and for the fourth peak it is around 93.01 degrees this is, it is here and so on for fifth and sixth peaks also yeah. now the tableau form you can see here this uh, the, the first bragg diffraction peak is having an 2 theta value of 44.53 as as previously discussed we can note the value over here it is 44.53 degrees and the second bragg diffraction peak is occurring at an angle of 51.89 degrees and the third diffraction peak is arising at a value of 76.8 uh, 76.45 degrees now represent the two theta values for various bragg diffraction peaks as obtained from the pattern we can see that the first the bragg diffraction peak is occurring for twice the bragg angle of 44.53 degrees and the second bragg diffraction peak is occurring in at, at an angle of 2 theta equal to 51.89 degrees and the third diffraction peak is 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 occurring at an angle of 76.45 degrees and fourth peak at an angle of 93.01 degrees and the fifth peak at an angle of 2 theta equal to 98.51 degrees and the sixth bragg diffraction peak is occurring at an angle of 2 theta equal to 122.12 degrees now after 2 theta find out 2 find out theta value that is now the two theta no theta values or the glancing angles will become 
for the first week it is 22.265 sec for the second week it is 25.945 for the third peak it is 38.225 and for the fourth peak it is 46.505 and for the fifth diffraction peak it is 49.255 and the, for the sixth diffraction being it is 61.06 these are the glancing angles or the angles of diffraction from various parallel planes of atoms now after sine theta find out sine square theta for all these values find sine theta and sine square theta now this here in this chart 0.144 is now the least value of sine square theta compared to all the Dirac diffraction peaks you can observe here now sine square theta by sine square theta minimum that is dividing all these values by the minimum value that is one point that is 0.144 you will get as 1, 1 1.33, 2.66, 3.63, 3.986 and 5.32 respectively on division. Now multiply this sine square theta by sine square theta minimum, this ratio by a factor 3. If you multiply, we are getting the values for the first Bragg diffraction peak as 3, for the second Bragg diffraction peak as 3.987 and for the third Bragg diffraction peak as 7.98 and for fourth Bragg diffraction peak it is 10.96 and for the fifth Bragg diffraction peak it is 11.958 and for the sixth Bragg diffraction peak it is 15.96. Now rounding off to the nearest digits we get this h square plus k square value as we should round off this value to the nearest uh, decimal we will get it as 3, 3.987 can be rounded off to 4, 7.98 here can be rounded off to 8. 10.96 can be rounded off to 11 and 11.958 can be rounded off to 12, 15.96 can be rounded off to 16. These are now the h square plus k square plus l square values for this Bragg diffraction peaks here. Now by using the standard chart and these values of various h square plus k square plus l square, we will find the Miller indices values hkl. Now how it can be done? Now we will see the first peak here. The first peak is having a h square plus k square value of 3. Now here we have, give, we have provided a selection rule chart. Now if you look at the value of h square plus k square plus l square is 3, the corresponding Miller indices are 1, 1, 1. So represent the Miller indices here as for 3 as 1, 1, 1. Similarly, for the second Bragg diffraction peak, the h square plus k square plus l square value is 4. So again moving to the selection rule chart, we can see that this value of 4 is arriving for the HKL values of 200. So I have put it, I have put it over here 200. Similarly, for 8, H square plus K square plus value, L square value of 8, the corresponding Miller indices are 220. And for 11, it is 311. This can be seen here. For 8, it is 220. For 11, it is 311. And similarly, for 12, it is 222. This is again observed here. For 12, it is 222. And for h square plus k square plus l square value of 16, that is for the last diffraction peak, the h scale value is 400. It is observed here, 400. Right. Now, we can find the lattice constant. To find the lattice constant, what we will do is, we give you the formula is being given, a equal to lambda by sine theta into root over h square plus k square plus l square. So, for, for each and every Bragg diffraction peak, find the corresponding lattice constant. So on substituting the value of sine theta for the first Bragg diffraction peak and h square plus k square plus l square value here, we got the value as 7.0406 for the first Bragg diffraction peak. For the second peak we obtained in a similar fashion as 7.043. For the third Bragg diffraction peak, the calculated lattice constant is 7.0282. From the fourth Bragg diffraction peak, the calculated lattice constant is 7.044. And, for, and from the fifth Bragg's accelerated diffraction peak, the calculated lattice constant is 7.0406. And for the final diffraction peak, the calculated lattice constant is 7.0427. Now, the average lattice constant of the crystalline material can be calculated to be around 7.04. This is the average lattice constant of the material. Next, we have to also determine what is the crystalline phase. So, how to determine the crystalline phase? Here, if you take the cubic, we have in a cubic, because here we are multiplying by 3, we can see it is a cubic lattice. For a cubic lattice, there are three different kinds of lattices, that is simple cubic, BCC and FCC. So, among these three, what could be, what could be the possibility? So, if we go to the selection rule chart, here we can see that a simple cubic, for a simple cubic lattice, all uh, parallel planes of atoms are possible. All these Miller indices are possible for simple cubic. But simple cubic is also very rare element to be for rare crystalline phase to be formed. Only polonium is the only material that exhibits uh, simple cubic lattice. No other material exhibits simple cubic. So we can eliminate this. 
So only the possibility is, is in between either BCC or an FCC. So the, sh the shown crystalline phase can be either BCC or FCC because simple cubic is only possible for pol polonium and also in a simple cubic lattice all the, uh, the X-ray diffra reflections happen from all these possible planes. So ba based on that conclusion we only consider either it, it should be a BCC or FCC lattice. How to choose that? We can observe here, here that the 111 reflection, the reflection from 111 plane is, is occurring only in FCC but will not occur in a BCC lattice. But also if you take the 311 reflection from the reflection from 311 plane, this reflection from 311 plane is also occurring for FCC lattice but does not occur for uh, BCC lattice. And all other possibilities are there. If you take 200, uh, to, from 200, in both FCC lattice and BCC lattice reflections occur. For 220, in both BCC and FCC reflections occur. Similarly, for 222 also, in for BCC and FCC, Bragg reflections can occur. Also, in 440 also, Bra Bragg reflections can occur for both BCC lattice and FCC lattice. But these two reflections, that is, that is a 111 and that is 111 reflection 111 plane and reflections from 311 plane can only happen for FCC. So the crystalline uh, phase shown in the earlier figure should be an FCC lattice.